Welcome to the Hall Space Podcast. It's about connections. I'm your host, Dr. Rich Hall, and this is a weekly conversation about whatever and however I see to connect things. For people who want to connect, chat, and learn a thing or two about a thing or two. Without further ado, let's start the show. Hello. Hey there. Welcome to the Hall Space Podcast. Welcome back. This is Dr. Rich Hall, host of the Hall Space Podcast, along with my lovely and capable co-host and wife. Nicole Hall. Hey there. How's everybody doing out there in, in the world? Living the dream, I'm sure. Living the dream, I'm sure. <laughs> the, the, the nightmare that is 2020 is drawing to a close, weirdly. It is. It is. It is so weird to be near the end of the year it already. Actually, it feels like a what? Yeah, like yeah. Wait, no, it can't. Wait, Does it just end? Is it? Is it over? <laughs> is it over? I is think, it over? That's. I think we're really close. Like I'm, we are. Yeah, th- th- we've got two weeks before Christmas. By the way, only two. Yeah, Christmas is on a Friday, son. Oh, okay. So yeah, is so that three got, weeks or? Well, it's three Fridays. It's three full weeks. Yes, sir. Yeah. So okay. next Friday, Three Friday full after weeks, that. But, uh, yeah. t- in two weeks is the week of Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I should Which really is the last week that consider we buying scramble. some gifts. <laughs> we should act like we're going to do shipping Christmas. is really bad right now. Like, so we shouldn't play with it. We should really probably get on top. Yeah. Of we are notoriously the last, last minute. minute Christmas shoppers. <laughs> it's like we know this time is coming every year. <laughs> and yet and still. The older the kids get, the more they like want specific they things. They do. They do. We had those when you're when you're a new parent, those first couple years, they're not really paying attention. They're not. They're so not. the pressure you put on yourself is purely by you. Right. But once they get past like six or seven, uh, now they are actively putting pressure on you. They are actively they're like, hey, so for specific things. There's a person named Santa. He's supposed to bring something. <laughs> right. I want these specific things. These things. I'm I'm going to write him a letter <laughs> right? so that he right. knows what I want. Right, right. I'm going to talk about it nonstop. <laughs> right. And if right. I don't get it, I'm going to be yeah. disappointed. I, I mean, and, you know, sadly enough, we are also those parents like, oh, we ordered it on Amazon, but it's not coming until right before New Year's. So, uh, I, uh, <laughs> here's a photograph of the thing you want. <laughs> See, you just got to wait a couple ordered. days. It's but ordered. We ordered it, though. It, but, it's on its way. But they had delayed it. What had happened... Yeah, was. yeah. It got lost in the mail. It got lost. There was. Santa's stuff what was got, on back order. Something got lost last year. Something got lost last something year. Something got lost last year. I can't remember what year. exactly. I can't remember what it was either. I plan to do like a full Christmas episode. So this isn't even our full Christmas no, conversation. No, it's just, just sort of prep. Weird into it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I plan to do a Christmas episode and a New Year's like wrap up. Oh, if you guys haven't started things. ordering presents, do it now. Do it now. Get on top of it. Do it now. But don't, don't make our mistakes. Hopefully <laughs> you're one of those really cool people who did all their shopping on Black Friday oh, or yeah. did it before. Like those really like, great oh, those people in the mom groups that are like, I'm very finished and I'm, everything's wrapped. Right, right, right. I wish I had your life, Stacey. Good, right. Good job, Rebecca. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we get it. You love your children <laughs> and you want to make good memories for them without you know, elevating your own stress. Listen, honestly, with the stuff that we've gotten to kids in the past two weeks, we could wrap that uh, stuff up and, and give right, it to them. Right, right, Everybody's right. got a laptop. Right. And fires. Right. I did and a couple so, of Black Friday. I got a couple of Black Friday deals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, and they're using them for school, but still. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 But still, the, they're the gifts cost, nonetheless. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple of hundred bucks here and there yeah. uh, to take care of some things yeah. because our kids are really into laptops now. Yeah. Mostly because of Roblox. For those of you out there who have children who are obsessed with Roblox, oh we are among you. I don't get it. Um, I do. I do know that if I was a child, I would have been totally into that. Like, Absolutely. It's basically Legos, the video game. It is. It like is. Lego should be kicking themselves for not yeah. having an open source video game that lets you essentially build yeah. and play and make games. And honestly, for two of the kids, we could get them a bunch of Roblox gift cards and they would be... Yeah, yeah. Daniel fine. would definitely be... But they would. the problem, as we've learned, when we occasionally hit them off with 20 bucks here and there, mm-hmm. is that they burn through it immediately. They do. And they do. within a day, within 24 hours, they're like, so can I get more can Robux? Can I get more? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, no, you're not learning to save my No, my, my, no my they child. earned Robux a couple months back. And so we're like, okay, Everybody earned, you know, twenty dollars worth of Roblox. We're gonna put them. And in our mind, that yeah. should last you like at least a week. I mean, I mean, you know, it's all disposable income. It was like Wednesday. Right, right, right. <laughs> By Thursday, they were like, so, so, um, 
When I do we get my more Robux? Robux? Someone yeah. stole my Robux. I don't know what you're doing on there. That somebody could take your Robux. But yeah, yeah. yeah. What they get into, like, they get it's they're very easily scammed out of the Robux. And on the one hand, it's like, oh, that's not you know, I don't hold it against them. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's like that's how you learn. It's like if you hit, if, like if you gave them money, like yeah. like we did. When you get money, you take it to school, and somebody said, "Let me hold that let dollar," hold and that they dollar don't give it back and to you. Never pay you back. And yep. then you're like, "But they took my dollar, though." You're and my parents would be like, "So and you, you learned a valuable lesson <laughs> about not giving money away. <laughs> yeah. That's on you. That's that's on you, though. You. That's on you, though. That's on you. <laughs> that's on you. So, yeah. you know, um, I don't I don't fault them. I mean, I, I help out where I can, and. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't make a ton of, if they don't get to hold on to a bunch of money yeah. in the Roblox universe or whatever, uh, or Fortnite bucks or whatever, Daniel wants. Whatever. Daniel a wants bit of all both. Of that. Yeah. yeah, Daniel, my middle son, he's our tech kid. He is. So he's very much he's he's our he's our video game kid. I won't call him a tech kid necessarily. Yeah. But he does tend to like like flashy technology. He's the kid he who keeps does. asking for a VR Virtual headset. Virtual reality. And I'm like, I'm not yep. getting you a five hundred dollar to three hundred dollar device. He has very expensive taste. He has very expensive taste. Very he's, expensive. He wanted taste. the. Uh, he's the guy who got the hoverboard, which was the most expensive thing we've ever we've bought ever for a bought child. A kid. Yep. That yep. wasn't, you know, uh, teeth and right. and or doctor <laughs> glasses or, Dr. Right, or yeah, yeah. Honestly, he's the one with the teeth problem and the glass. He is he our is. most expensive kid. <laughs> Man, that kid Hands is pricey. Down. <laughs> that is. kid is pricey. He is costing us the farm. He is. Right, he right, is. right, he right, is. right, right. I mean, you know, Victoria came with a huge in, income cost. The other cost. two, yeah, the other two nickel and diamonds. Her startup cost was pretty <laughs> Her high. Startup cost. <laughs> being in the NICU. Yeah, she was in the um, NICU for twenty eight and, days. And Ra with his allergies, he's he's cost yeah. us over time. We've he's had, had multiple, one or two overnights, multiple overnights. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But Daniel's our steady string. Like, hey, we need to keep our bucks up because <laughs> right, he right. is going to run down. He's he running is. a tap. He is definitely running. He's a definitely tab. running a tap. And the interesting thing about him is he'll do stuff to earn stuff. And then he'll say, "Okay, now I earned a hundred dollars worth of stuff," and it's like, ah. "Nah, my, nah, my guy." Uh, That's the one thing he he always notices with, with him and Richie. Um, he always notices that there's a Richie gets more things. He does. But Richie knows to ask for things within a twenty dollar pocket. He does. Daniel and wants he's got simpler and taste. Two hundred dollars. Yeah, worth Daniel's of- like, "Hey, so this costs fifty. I want a drone." Right. <laughs> And we've gotten them two thus far. Yeah, he's broken them all. <laughs> and honestly, all. when you buy cheap drones, they break. Yeah. And, you know, they're very We're easily. not buying him an expensive drone. He's just going to break buying it just the same. Yeah, yeah, basically. I feel like we should probably get something within the, like, $100 range, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, he'll enjoy it. But the hard part, it's hard to spend $100 on a kid who you, whom you know yeah. might become disenchanted with a thing right. within a, a matter of hours. Right, right. Right. So it's right. like I don't want to put down that investment. Right. Um, and uh, maybe if we had consolidated those two twenty dollar, forty dollar drones into yeah. one expen- more expensive drone, yeah. it wouldn't have broken as fast or been as as difficult to pilot. Uh, but hindsight, right? Whatever. Yeah, but raw, you could get him some, you know, Dollar Tree. You know, it, he's he's very specific. Yeah. So he just he, he genuinely just wants like I would like twenty dollars worth of army men. Very specific. Right now army he wants men. twenty dollars worth of uh, uh he's in the so the Wild West now. Yes. So he wants twenty dollars worth of Wild West figures, ca- cowboys and Indians. Yeah. And that'll pretty much be fine for him until he wants another thing. So this Christmas is Wild Wild West. This Christmas will be Wild Wild West. He tried to uh, get me to buy the Will Smith version of the Wild Wild West movie. I was like, I'm not he might have for that. Him. No, he's been watching on YouTube the trailers. Oh, it's has like, he? there's got to be a way to get it for free because I'm not paying for that movie. <laughs> I'm a Will Smith uh, fan. <laughs> uh, we own all of the bad boys. That's okay? hilarious. Like, did I ever? I don't think I ever owned that one. No. For good reason. We saw it at the theater because we did, that's did what we, we see the theater we together. Did. That was us. We, that was. Yeah. Is that how long we've been together? Yes. Mm. Yep. That was me and you. OK. Uh huh. I believe, I, huh? I, I you believe, believe you. You. <laughs> you believe it's just you know there were adventures pre you and then sometimes <laughs> that's so far back in the in the rolodex the mental rolodex and i'm like this was a test richie Vaughan. was it is this the test <laughs> i know we saw belly together that was our second date that was our second how about date. that is that trump not remembering that we saw wild wild west in the theaters together <laughs> We saw every movie before 2000 in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what we did every week on right. a Wednesday or Thursday night. Right. That's we went we to did. dinner. Yeah. I had I had money to take you to dinner and a movie. Ooh, you were living kind of high. You were. I was. You always mm. took me to dinner and a movie. It mm-hmm. was great. And because it was th- Tuesdays and Thursdays, restaurants were always like empty, empty. so you could sit wherever you want. Me and you. Yeah. 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 Now look at us with all these kids. 
all these kids. That's how that happens. I can't get you at a restaurant. I mean, uh, non COVID. <laughs> uh, you're not a yet. huge fan of eating indoors. I mean, on a Saturday night, you might get me to get my. Yeah. Get when my this place. is all over and I trust restaurants again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't we'll trust restaurants do right now. It'd be nice to dress up and go to a restaurant. Wouldn't it be nice? Sydney. Jeff Ruby it up. Oh my gosh. That's, you know, you know, that's totally what we're going to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally going to go to the precinct and just. Uh-huh. Enjoy a steak. And, oh, uh, man. And have 42 waiters come and bring us stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And crackling bread with yeah, garlic and, and the butter. And, oh, mm. Man, oh, man. Mm. And it comes out ready. Like, oh, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yes, nicely seared this steak. So bad. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Oh my mm-hmm. god! So if you're ever in the in the mood for spending a hundred dollars on a meal, yeah, uh, I do recommend the Jeff Ruby restaurants. His his personal politics aside, and, and him as yeah. a person aside, he does make a damn fine steak. He does. So he does. I do highly recommend. The precinct is our favorite, mm-hmm. and one of the you know among one of the top restaurants in the city. It is definitely, it's um, definitely. You um, know, uh, Jeff Ruby's downtown is is good. That's where I had the palms, Anna. Yeah, uh, the dish the that basically changed my the, life. It's it's a yeah. it's, it's you slice, slice up potatoes, potatoes, you put them in a pan with clarified butter, and then you fry it, uh, and then you put it in the oven and you flip it. I've learned how to make them. They're really kind of oh difficult gosh, to make. Yeah. Uh, not difficult, but just time consuming to slice yeah. up the potatoes with a mandolin. Not You've done slice that your for fingers a open. Dinner for us before. I've done it for a couple special dinners. I haven't yeah. done it in quite some time. I haven't done it it's in been this a while, house. But no, you haven't. No, but. I haven't. I don't even know where my mandolin is actually. Yeah. Um, I may have thrown it out because I did cut myself oh, for the last the, times I used it. Yeah. And so, uh, Palm's Anna, man, it's a really good uh, it's dish that's awesome to make. Goes great with steak. Yeah, yeah, but also Jeff Ruby's restaurants are, are yeah. amazing. They are. And I highly awesome recommend amazing. them. Um, customer services. Customer service is amazing. Amazing as well. It's just it's just a little on the expensive side, so you're, you're not is, walking out of there is. without spending a hundred bucks. No, we yeah we we save up to do that. Right, right, right. And I, special occasions yeah, only. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Once every couple of years. I remember it was weird when I first started working at uh, where I work now at Miami. I mentioned that somebody asked some question. I was like, yeah, I've had a hundred dollar steak. Yeah. Uh, just joking. And they looked at me like I was strange. And these are all like other psychologists. Yeah. And they're like surprised. And or? they're surprised. And I'm like, that's not even like a, that's not even the most expensive meal not you could have in the city of Cincinnati. Remotely. No. And I do understand that in Oxford, you know, there are way more limited options, even though Oxford's kind of an expensive place to live and eat. It, yeah. Um, but. I remember but they were not like going all the way down seriously? to the river, river to yeah yeah I mean but, they, steaks, but 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 I also did not think that was the most unusual thing I could have said out loud. I don't think it's unusual in that but, way that you can kind of forget that your lifestyle might be you know and I was doing this as a graduate student. Uh, oh no, we've we've always been really into you've always been snobby. Food. I could never take you with anything below a, a Applebee's. <laughs> you've always had high <laughs> expensive tastes. I like good food. Mm. I mean, and honestly, mm. when we were dating, your mom was cooking every every day. My grandmother was cooking every day. My mom, Either, was, my mom uh, when we first started dating, I was not speaking with my mother, so yeah, she was not cooking every day. <laughs> well, it not was a couple me. months, and then you guys reconciled. And uh, it was beautiful. It's somewhere in our relationship, yeah, in the, in the yes. midst of our relationship, we did reconcile. It, yeah. It, yeah, it's funny, because my grandmother always said... You got him talking back to his mama. I was uh, like, I don't know if I'm responsible for that, but yeah, I'll take yeah. it. You, you softened it. I was I was finally dating someone she would approve of. Mm. So it, it helped. <laughs> it made a difference, to be certain. Because she never. Other... So the secret of my mom is if, if I started dating someone she wouldn't like, she would clean, clean the, the oven. oven. <laughs> <laughs> when they would come over, and she yeah. never did that to Nicole. Oh my gosh, God bless her! In, yes, in almost twenty years, twenty years, twenty two years, yeah. she never cleaned the oven when Nicole came and over. Here's what's funny: you clean our oven every Saturday, and I'm like, turn it off. I don't. I'm actually not cleaning the oven. I'm cleaning. You're not pants, cleaning the oven. You're I'm, cast ironing. I'm, yes, yes, that's right. Yes. That's my. Bad. I'm seasoning my cast irons seasoning that I use for Daddy breakfast. I make Daddy uh, breakfast every Saturday. Every Saturday, and you do. You do. Um, I season the cast iron at the end of the. Yeah, meal yeah. Just so that it's it. ready for the next. So that it's ready use. for the next. Yeah. And when I'm really on top of it, you got to season it multiple times. So you got to keep coming back every hour. Yeah. Let it cool, reseason. Oh do that gosh. like three or four times. I haven't done that, so I do need to do that. 
And usually around Christmas is when I do that because it's, Cast Iron will change your life, but it's a lot of upkeep. It's not a lot of upkeep. You just got to be sensitive. It's it's one of those once you get to a routine, yeah. you got it. Yeah. Um, but it, if it's not like other pans where it's like wash them, throw them in the dishwasher, and yeah. then pull them out and throw them. In the, never put a cast iron in the dishwasher, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my gosh, no. If you no. want, I can do a whole episode on just talking about cast iron. I, I'm a big fan. Listen, of I don't nothing makes use... pancakes like a cast iron. Listen, nothing makes food like cast. Yeah, we don't iron. actually cook on anything. But we cast don't iron. use anything except. Yeah. Um, when we're boiling like noodles or something yeah, simple yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet rice. But everything else is done yeah. in cast iron. Cast iron's not really great for boiling. It's, no, it's, it's good not. for frying. It but is not definitely really for very good for frying and searing uh-huh, and uh-huh. eggs and potatoes. Crispy edges. If you're crispy oh edges on your crispy edges like on your French toast or on your um Ugh. pancakes, go with cast iron. So yeah, yeah, I'm a big yep. fan of cast iron. Yep, yep. Lodge yep, yep. is, you know, the best you can get. Uh just picking it up somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, yeah, but so um, I you, like to pick up my cast iron up at thrift stores. Yeah, those are. Could be, oh, here's the thing about picking just them up: troll thrift stores. Don't just buy any. But look at them and make when sure you good. do that at the thrift stores, you do a lot of work on them once you bring them home. Yes, but I also enjoy that process okay. of, of so stripping you, them in because because if you get them at thrift store, you, you're going to get them rusted. You're going to have to. Yeah, it was like the people at the thrift store don't care how they were how they came in. Yep. Yep. The people who, they're rusted who threw them out didn't care. Yep. So that you're yep. going to have to strip them down. Down, re-season them. I've seen you take a very beaten down cast mm-hmm. iron and make it beautiful again. Yeah. Which is very interesting about cast iron in general because when other pots and pans get bad, you just throw them out and get another one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mostly because those get stripped and they often have a coating in them. Yeah. And once so that's gone, you're eating Teflon. Metal, Teflon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with cast iron, it's like you're eating iron and iron's good for you. So just make sure that you uh, clean <laughs> it and sure sear you, it and put yeah. more bacon grease in it and uh, it'll be it'll be fine. So yeah, yeah, I'm 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 good with the cast iron, and then, and we have deviated. I feel like we've hopscotched like we, four different subjects. We we have already. we started we were at Christmas talking about and, Christmas, and then yeah, yeah, which we will loop around to to our end of the year episode. We'll talk a little bit about Christmas. Uh, we've only is that reminds me since she just said it out loud. Mm-hmm. We've only got two more episodes this year. We're gonna do one episode um, on the third. We tape them on the 13th, so it'll release the four, week of the on 14th. The Sunday. Okay. Uh, and then one episode that'll release right before Christmas, and then we're taking the year off. Right. Uh, and we'll be back in January. For season two. For season two. She's Ooh. really excited about season two. She's got some ideas. I do. For things to change. Apparently, there are two halls. There are two halls. There are two halls. And so she gets <laughs> um, some say on the Hall like Space you forget podcast. That sometimes. Do I? Do I? Would or do you I let keep, me? Would I? <laughs> I keep reminding you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Is it that I forget or you feel the need to remind me I that mean, there are two halls? Because I don't think I forget. <laughs> it's just a, another friendly reminder. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There are two uh-huh. halls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and uh, one of the things that we will I will tease about season two is we keep talking about doing interviews and yeah. uh, other just bringing out other people for discussions. And, and maybe doing... Uh, video recording. Yes, yes. We're going to video record some episodes. I've, yeah. I've looked into how to do that and I'm learning some things about that. We might we might also do like reactions. If you're a fan of like reactions and things like that. Like, yeah. I watch a lot of media and some of what we, we talk about is often. about those things. Yeah. We'll, and we'll have like a whole conversation where we're like, this would be good for the show. Yeah. Uh, so we may do some like video reactions or things like that because yeah. that's a fun way of also continuing connecting. certain conversations and connecting yep. Yep. connecting certain ideas and, and whatnot and, and so we're going to be interviewing some people for season two and it'll be exciting doing some more things yeah. that'll, be, that'll be exciting it'll be hopefully it'll posting be more pictures and I mean yeah. there are so many things that we talk about that if you had a visual image you right have, right it would probably help yeah yeah to, yeah. to, uh, to listen to the show and yeah. have those things uh, or maybe even watch us as we talk about the show. Oh, yeah. Which would mean we'd have to step up our game and not just do this in <laughs> jeans and a polo. You gotta actually look like you look like belong say, on TV. I to, yeah, I'd have to put my face yeah, on. But yeah, yeah. Comb your hair. Have some <laughs> dignity. Have some dignity about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'd have to I'd have to get the fro back together and then, then yeah. we'll see. I think it'd be fun, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... Yes, looking forward to all the things happening new in 2021. 2021 is a is a weird concept. I, I posted a meme today that said, I don't see a lot of people saying 2020 going to be my year. Y'all nervous? Yeah. And I don't blame you. Like, yeah. I, a lot of people are talking about, like, the vaccine coming and how 21, 2021 is going to be different. I don't know if I've gotten that deep into my thoughts about a vaccine, but I 
don't believe you, you need more people. We're waiting, right? Yeah. <laughs> For the second round. We're not anti-vaxxers. Let's be clear about that. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm, I'm totally okay. I remember when uh, we had the children and yep. that was when the vaccination movement was really, anti-vaccination yeah. movement was really That's getting big. big. Yeah, and because they were saying that some vaccines were causing autism. autism. And there was this big fear that autism was like the end of the world, that you really lost fell. your child and yep. they had autism, which is very ableist. Is that the word I'm looking for? It is for? definitely very ableist. Because it's like... They can have just as full lives as any other neurotypical kid. Absolutely. Right, 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 right. And this belief that we should, you know, essentially demonize this thing. Yeah. Uh, and there, no, there's no scientific proof that vaccines cause autism. No, I mean, that I do guy think, lied. The yeah. guy that originally even Had touted the, that. The study, yeah. Yes. Lied. And, lied. And because science being what it is right now, mm-hmm. as far as people's perceptions of it, there have been a lot of people who like totally buy into it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in part because they're, you know, in a world where there's so much outside your control, it is very yeah. easy to get caught up in the fear that right. um, something could happen. Right. And, uh, and, and there's nothing you could do about it. C- correct. And I think as African Americans, we are even more uh, cautious mm-hmm. and Vigilant. fearful mm-hmm. because of all of the experiments that have been done. Right, right. Because on it's African American. A variety of other Absolutely. times where we were denied yep. um, care. Where, uh, or given care under the guise right. of helping, but actually right. being pumped full of. Mm-hmm. Or a variety of outcomes where we're not even part of the studies. Like right. there's already some talk about how the vaccines themselves haven't been tested on African-Americans. So are they going to have the same rate of effect- effectiveness? Which is interesting because we are getting COVID at more higher, higher rates. rates. Right. And so they're, they're talking have... about giving us the vaccine. They're talking about like, can they give us the vaccine? earlier but more of us are worried about it uh but right because is of it being tested on us yeah. conditions that we have we are at a higher risk yeah yeah so, i think that speaks to just sort of the you know uh particularly right now when we look at how the world is going there is a what's good for us on a sci- objectively scientific level right what we can tolerate or are willing to do emotionally um, and how you reconcile those two sort of dialectics. How do you, right. you know, th- this might be good for us, but it doesn't feel right. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think it's okay that people have those concerns, but I do think also mm-hmm. um, you can't allow those reservations to stop you from uh, listening to doctors and scientists. One thing that's very interesting to me, I, I'm over, I realize how much we overuse the word interesting in this podcast, but we that's do. a conversation for another time. We'll, yeah. we'll fix it in season two. Yeah. Um, we'll work But on like it. everybody who is not willing to wear a mask is also looking for things like herd immunity and a vaccine. It's like you believe in the science when it comes to vaccination, but, but you don't believe in science when it believe. comes to a mask. Yeah. And it's like you, Does it what, make sense? what they really want is the most convenient science. But to be honest, <laughs> that's the not mask, how science work. No, it's not. The mask is the thing that's going to hold you out for the longest. Because even if, correct, you know, I mean, and honestly, and with the vaccine, or, yeah. with or without the vaccine, the mask is what is going to help you reduce your risk. It gives you, yeah, it gives right. you a buff to reduce your risk. Right. And the vaccine's not going to come without you're going to you're going to essentially get symptoms of of a covid or you're going right. to get you know there're going to be side effects. Correct. Correct. So you have to like take into account that this is going to cause other complications. These may cause other issues. There's yes. no there's no easy painless way out of this. No. No, there's this not. This is with us now. It's going to be inconvenient yep. and the idea it's- that there was a time in this country where we were totally we understood inconvenience but now that we built this kind of exceptionalist society we're like no 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 it should be the least amount of convenience possible it's like there's no No. escape inconvenience here you've lied to yourself to think that you had more control over the outcomes than you thought you did and you don't the world is cruel and the planet is trying to kill you and it it is indifferent to your existence as a as a you know orb that's falling through space it doesn't care and that's okay you don't necessarily need it to care. You should take care of it and take care of yourselves while recognizing that you are holding on to the skin of a planet yeah. that would shake you off if it could. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, that's, that's, I, I, I've, wow. <laughs> Get it together over there, Nicole. I know, right? What are you doing, Slaughter? 
um, there's the commercial about the shingles. It was like, oh, you've been eating oh, very good for the past couple of years and you're exercising. Shingles doesn't care. Mm-hmm. I feel like COVID is the same. COVID doesn't care. COVID does not care. COVID does not care. At all. But um, I want to do Christmas. COVID doesn't care. COVID doesn't but care. But I need to see my grandmother for Thanksgiving. COVID, COVID doesn't care. COVID doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah, um, I keep meaning to do that as one of my wacky commercials. That uh, definitely would work. COVID doesn't COVID care. COVID doesn't care. Yeah. But I eat an apple every day. COVID doesn't care. <laughs> but I miss my mother. She's in a nursing home. COVID doesn't care. COVID doesn't care. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the, it's this belief that the vaccine will be the thing that saves people. I d- I'm not saying that it won't, and I'm not saying, hey, I'm never taking a vaccine, but I am saying I'm going to be cautious. I'm probably not going to be trial one of vaccine, um, so I'm not going to jump on taking it. But but it'll be a gradual process. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, here's also the other side of that. It's going to take months and months and months of months for Before it even them to produce to as much vaccine. Correct. Right? For them Correct. to be able to distribute it to as many people as needed to be, it needs to be distributed Correct. to. Correct. Um, and for those of us who are just normal, everyday working folks yep. to get it. Right. I was um, watching, I follow uh, Vice President elect Kamala Harris, uh-huh. and they were talking about the fax- vaccine. And she said, Yeah, I'll take it. But our biggest concern is getting it to the frontline people and right. the people who need it first. Right. So we're talking about hospitals, we're talking about. Uh, you know, people who do deliveries, things like that. Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. You know, their their goal is going to the be people to who, get who, the people who we, we the, we've left the, out there with their. Oh yeah, the people that we call essential, uh huh, but don't want to pay, but don't want to give them the appropriate health care so yeah. that they don't have to put their lives right, right. on the line in order right. to feed we their children. Barely today. gave them enough PPE if we did right. it all. Right, um, right. But we know we need them for the society to run because right. it wasn't there wasn't a. a First, first couple months of the quarantine taught me we needed a nary politician. Right. What we needed was people to deliver groceries, yep. to stock the shelves. We needed uh, groceries. people in the hospitals. We needed, mail. We, needed mm-hmm. hot, we needed nurses. All those people that we, we needed, don't think that yep. there were arguments about just just last year. Just should we pay them, them more? Yeah. Should yeah. we raise the minimum wage? Just, no. But I mean, but society ran to a halt. You can, right. The stores Without were barren. Them. We were living yes. in a dystopian Fighting novel. over toilet paper. There were X's on pieces of paper yep. in front of the bread lines. Yep. Because we don't need 30 types of bread. We right. just need bread. Just and that's one bread. thing I don't understand. I'm going to rant for just a second. Sure. We are still producing like 30 types of bread. When <laughs> let's just go wheat and white and <laughs> stop making. I don't need my honey oat. I'll be perfectly <laughs> fine without honey oat. Multi-grain. So long as stop just, making it. Stop making it. <laughs> yeah. Just make white and wheat if you need to well, because right now we don't need 40 different types of bread we just need there to be a steady stream of bread that goes back to the idea that we are uh, unable to assess the situation and change accordingly right mm. we're not malleable enough well because we built the system for efficiency we we did capitalism but said we, we needed 18 different types of soap but life says and we need white and wheat Right, white we need wheat. toilet paper. Right, right. We, we need, need just bleach. We like, need bleach. We need wipes. We need yeah. Yeah, there's... yeah. But we couldn't produce that. But we still have eight different types of dish soap. Right. Right. Or and just random stuff that we don't need. There's a right. funny SNL where they're talking about they're going through the grocery store and all the stuff that people don't buy yeah. during the right. pandemic because right. we did never need it <laughs> because we never needed it. Yeah. You know. I mean, it goes back. I remember to those... look, we couldn't find like any any pasta. No. No, I because mean, people knew you could say pasta for you, yeah, you need to be sheltered in, in, in place and you can make a bunch of it and mm-hmm. it'll, it'll last a whole you for a week. People. Yeah, it's Absolutely. pretty cheap. You couldn't find pasta or, you know, but we have like but 18 different types of, uh, of tomato special sauce cheese or tomato sauce or. Yeah, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's just the weirdness that is America. And I'm pretty sure there are places out there who would just love to have even a fraction of what Correct. we have other parts Correct. of the world where this abundance isn't but it's like yeah. it's a false abundance when it is there are you know 18 different types of bread but the yeah. minute that the world goes uh to crap there is zero bread yeah um and that they're going to keep producing all those 18 types of bread when really we just need like two to three types of bread but the but I, you know it's and I'll, I'll gladly sacrifice my honey oat just so long as there is bread on the shelf just, just so long that everybody can have could bread. you just fill that aisle with bread well because you're assessing the situation and you're saying Okay. What's necessary? What is absolutely 
necessary. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that um, with the current (laughs) managers, we are assessing it correctly. Yeah. I mean, well, we just kind of got to a place where you didn't have to. So, yeah. But now we do. Mm. Now we we do. Do we? We do. Do we? We absolutely do. You sure about that? I'm absolutely positive. Uh, Yeah. 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 Says who? Says a lot of. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's a weird world we live in, for mm-hmm. certain. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I am not uh, sure how we're going to all survive this, but I know we will. I mean, some of us will. Definitely be will. I mean, there's going to be a. We need it. We need like a day of mourning. We need a day of like do. rest. We need a day of reflect. We need to do so much reflection. There's so as much as a country, uh, as a absolutely. state, as a city. Like, hey, what's what got us here? Yeah. Well, and you know, honestly, yeah, I think there should be a good amount of fasting and prayer, of course, that says. Atonement. Exactly. What? How did we get here? How can we adjust everything to mm-hmm. accommodate the world that we are living in now? Yeah. 2019. That we not living in that that age anymore. Right. Right. We are living right. How in are we going to go forward? Because like, even if you know, even if people start it, because they're not thinking people are going to get vaccines until you know mid 2021. Yeah. Yeah. And so even if people start getting, you know, we're really up to the, that's, that's just starting getting vaccines. Right. Even if we're not really going to be like, we're not in a movie theater again until 2022, 2020. Right. You know, late. Realistically speaking. Because even if it's two, right now, the one that most people are talking about is like two shots. Like that takes a while. Yeah. And enough people have to get it so that even if you go outside, you're not, you're not you know, right. you're not still kind of at risk. And right. it's going to mutate because that's what viruses like this do. Because that's exactly what viruses do. That's how yeah. this one turned up in society because yeah. it mutated it from mutated. some other random thing that yeah. just was, a you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a thing that resequences DNA. It's built for mutation yeah. to survive. And it presents differently. It's just trying to survive out here. COVID's just trying to survive, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to replicate itself endlessly. Bruh. So that it can exist. And if it has to kill all of you to do it, so be it. I mean, come on. If I could set hold it back. COVID aflame, I would. Mm. I would set it aflame and uh, dance yeah. on its grave. Yeah. Okay. But I guess I guess my biggest fear, as always with humanity, is that it will not take the moment and reflect after this is over. And we'll just keep bullying forward as if there's nothing to be learned. No, I, I, I'm I with you on that. There's got to be some reflection Right, and there's got to be... Who's got time for that? Ain't nobody got time for that. We we absolutely have time for it now. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> it's important. It's important. <laughs> yeah. It's important yeah. To, to look at how we got here, how we can move forward. Mm-hmm. Move forward amicably. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, sure, sure. And I, and I think that, you know, appreciating what we have, I think that's going to be yeah, I a think, big part of that. I think uh, one thing that will be key, I think there have been... Uh, factors that have sort of profited from the divisions among people. Yeah. And I do think this should have taught us that we need each other. Yes. But there have been so many people stoking divisions. I mean, yeah. and I, I will say I, I'm not so much complicit in stoking divisions so much as I am I'm complicit in like pushing what I know to be my agenda, which is my own civil rights and humanity. Right. Uh, right. There are people who see that as a threat and who always have. I mean, this is America. Don't catch them slipping now. But right. Um, right. it's hard to reconcile how you do that. How do you keep pushing for your rights how and agenda when forward. the world isn't ready for that? Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that people get so upset with Obama because he plays centrist and moderate so much. And he believes that intelligence will win the day when, you know, because you're he's with got people. both sides to consider. Yeah. He considers more parts. He considers more parts of the than- puzzle. Um, he does. He but does. That, but he gets lost amongst those people who just want a hard line defense, and for him to push the needle in a certain way, like, hey, could you listen yeah. to your black side more and just yeah. do that? Yeah. Even though, if nothing else, we've learned from the current administration that the system would not have tolerated that from him. No. Nearly as much as it would tolerate from. No, they've a tolerated co- a person way with a more complexion. Yeah. For, different complexion. Right. Yeah. I I right. I agree with Obama in general, just because. I I would like to consider both sides, mm. you know, I mean, yeah. they don't, you know, 
there are there are people who don't consider both sides and don't care. They care about their side only. But yeah. honestly, it's like you said, for us to really um, move forward, we really need each other. Yeah. And I don't see any harm in trying to figure out what that middle ground is. There the are problem, some things- part of the problem is, uh, historically, mm-hmm. as a group, that they don't want a middle ground from us. They don't. They, you have to to get a middle ground. You have to see the other side as equal. Uh, and there, there, there hasn't always been uh, that. Right. We, we haven't been afforded that. Right. That equality, and right. so we've had to fight and scrape and demand it and yeah. change society to yeah. get it. Uh, and the problem is that comes at a cost. Right. You think it comes. At oh no! Cost. It always comes at a cost. Does uh, it? We always, we always have to sacrifice something. If nothing no, no, else, we, we, the cost was. I mean, the cost for Obama was a Trump. Ugh. Right. Like you don't Is get that? I, I I said it I said it literally the day oh. he was elected because I was teaching my class the day after and I said you don't get the the healthy buffet that was the Obama presidency without having to take the crap that wow. is the Donald Trump presidency so so I feel like to I've, <laughs> that reality I I feel like you said a word mm-hmm. um, I think that's interesting and I think. Um, you know, it is time to take a pause for the cause. Yeah. But I want you to come back and I want you to say that again mm. and then explain it because I'll explain it a little bit. Yeah, I think it's important. Uh thanks for watching. We'll take a commercial and we'll be right back. See you soon. So let me tell you about Anchor Podcast. It's the podcasting service that I use. Anchor.fm is the easiest way to make a podcast, and there are many different reasons why, but foremost is it's free. So you don't need to go out and buy a whole bunch of equipment. Uh, If you have a phone uh, or a computer and a microphone, you can record and edit your podcast right on your phone or computer. So that's one major benefit, uh, as well as the fact that they'll distribute your podcast to several different podcasting sites for you. Not only can your podcast be found on Anchor, it can also be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, and Google Podcast as well. So you don't have to worry about going to all those different sites and setting yourself up. They'll do it for you. You can also make some money on your podcast. Say you have a podcast that only five people listen to on a regular basis. They don't limit you on how many subscribers you have to have in order to be able to make a little bit of change uh, for your podcast to keep yourself going. So pretty much everything you need uh, to start a podcast can be found at Anchor. FM. So go download the app uh, either in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store or go to anchor.fm to get started. And I guarantee you it'll make things so much easier for you like it has for me. And we're back. Welcome back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hall Space Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Rich Hall, and my lovely and capable co-host and wife. Nicole Hall, thanks for joining us thanks for the second for half. Thanks for joining us for the second half. Uh, and sh- you had asked me to repeat myself when I said that the lovely buffet, the, the gourmet meal that was Obama. President Obama, uh, and what that did for us as a society, which, because it did, no matter what people say, uh, he will be... Um, and no matter what, he has flaws. I'm not the type that says right. he has zero flaws. I do believe right. that, you know, with the drone strike program and so many immigration that, yeah. and a variety of times where I felt like he should have used his platform to speak up because he had played the game for so long. Yeah. That was politics and he, he wasn't that seasoned in politics. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of funny to hear Jeremiah right now because mm-hmm. in retrospect, he wasn't that bad a guy and he was saying some things that weren't true, that weren't untrue, but white America was not ready for the message right. in that way. Right. Um, but you don't get the gourmet meal that is Obama without having to take the crap that is Donald Trump. So That's so far down from Obama, though. But white people do this literally throughout history. Literally I, throughout history. I know this. There's nothing. They will, they will have to face this change that yeah. is a black. I mean, and if you look at two terms. Yeah. If you look at. Um, oh, God, I'm, I'm blanking on the examples. But anytime a black person entered a space that white people felt like they shouldn't be in, There's they would always be a snapback. Opposite. Yeah. Wow. It's a, it's a it's a one step forward, two steps back kind of thing. And this is if you look at the history of America and how it how it treated things. Um, uh, a good example is uh, jockeys. Okay. Um, there is an example of a black male jockey, and I'll have to look up this reference, and maybe I'll drop it in. 
a black male jockey who started making all this money because mm-hmm. uh, he was really good. And mm-hmm. the, the sport just hated the idea that he was. And so they started changing the rules and even kind of killed the sport oh. uh, because they just didn't like the idea that this guy had succeeded. He was doing so well. Doing so well as a jockey. Uh, because other black people saw it as a way to prosper, and yeah. the, the 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 society was just like, no, we can't tolerate this. We're humans; we want to uh, prosper. The same thing just happened like in baseball else. Uh, yeah. when uh, Jackie Robinson Jackie came Robinson. out. Jackie yeah. Robinson, uh, like, and these are you know sports examples, but those are some of the ways in which society was integrated. First, yeah. anytime you tried to integrate, or a black person got ahead. Oh, uh, just even the uh, Republican mm-hmm. Party fracturing because uh, right after. Um, Oh, right after uh, they freed the slaves uh, and black people were allowed to vote, all of these black Republicans yeah. got in and the Republican Party was like, we can't allow that uh, yeah. in the South. Suddenly there were all these black uh, Republican senators. Because, and, and since then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, have not allowed that yeah. number or volume of African-Americans in uh, in politics, in we national are politics. We're talking about politics. There are certain Republican values, old school Republican values that uh, a lot of us agree with or hold true. If a Republican, I always say if the Republican Party had better messaging and was willing to give up on this sort of staunch white cultural worldview, drinking, yeah, uh, they would they would definitely have more black people, but they really struggle with the messaging. And so they can only appeal to a certain type of black people that endorse white supremacy Self because hating black people there's something about conservatism that just loves itself some white supremacy like they're so tied I together I just don't understand because honestly if we're talking about just being humans right mm, the fact humans. that we mm. want to be able to work and take what, care of our families you have to believe that the other group is human in some way yeah, and not have yeah. some internal beliefs that they are yeah. somehow subhuman we're not subhuman we're not the alien. whole the whole language now is, is that it, they're culturally subhuman it's not that they're as biologically subhuman because you can't believe that but it's the culture it's the culture it's I mean, the culture this is, I mean it's just like Django when he pulled out the skull and he's like your brain yep. is different oh, no 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 yeah 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 um, I mean come on no that that idea I mean so fundamentally as creatures racism didn't exist until we needed to turn people into servants right we to had to develop to cases what systems. we wanted that, to do yeah, yeah. And, and so then we had to start scientifically justifying Mm -hmm. and so that's where you get um all this made up stuff all these made up things that sort of have been used to biologically and genetically and culturally justify rules if you will yeah Yeah. and there are words for all these things and i'm blanking on all of them right now as we're talking about it but um yeah it was the idea that you know africans had just different size skulls and bumps and grooves in the skulls yeah could tell you whether or not they were smart enough right um when they were just physically phrenology different. is it's, the name of that okay. that's that's the phrenology. science of of skull shape phrenology i had to think in my head it's a roots album i was gonna say it's the roots album. i had to look for the roots, roots album. album i could see the yeah. roots album i, I could see the cover too. in my head i can't and too. then <laughs> i was thinking for not what's the name of the album phrenology, phrenology. so that's yeah. that and then there was like like there was a there was a psychological um diagnosis that was the desire to run from slavery Dr. Yeah. Ken G, uh, original G, not a wannabe, uh, my mentor Dr. and friend. Dr. G, University of Cincinnati. Used to teach about how, you know, it was considered a type of insanity to want to escape slavery. Mm. Which is in- insane that, that uh, you know, white people were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would they ever want to leave this subservient position that where they... Why would you ever... Want to escape that. Want to not be a slave? Right, right, right. And so this idea that, like, white supremacy is so baked into... Um, American society and that mm-hmm. that desire to not look it in the face because it means having to uh, take a part and what's un, you know what's look been so deeply complicit. woven in yeah and for many white people particularly low SES white people they're like well I haven't had any privileges so it must not exist uh, when that's such a one a gross simplification because there were poor people in the time of slavery right. and slavery was used to make sure that those poor people always felt like they were better than somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and within conservative parties, you always have this sort of desire to be better than. Uh, it is, once again, one of those fundamental needs. I mean, and that's not to say that liberals escape that. Uh, no, uh, but, but... Democrats and I have a lot of disagreements. It's one of the reasons that when we boil it down and have a conversation about Richie's political views uh, overall, <laughs> it's like, I mean, I tend to vote for Democrats more because they vote for the things that I believe in, like schools and or 
uh, right. public institutions. Right. But I'm not a whole, you know, I'm, somehow I got There's, on a roll as a Democrat, which may be something 20 year old Rich did. But uh, there are times where I might vote the other way if, if a person. Well, fundamentally, there are some uh, Republican views that. There's some conservative views that I'm like, conservative okay. Conservative views that we, we might hold agree on. True. That. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But there's a lot. But th- then there are those times where you hit that wall of, oh, oh, you're going full oh, white. You're going I can't all do this the way. You. So mm. this doesn't apply to me after a certain point. Okay. Right, got right, it. Right. Got right. It, right. And you're, and you're going to espouse some beliefs that I'm going to feel like you're talking about people like me. Right. People I know. Right. And you're you're just not seeing them as human in a you're way. You're not that seeing I them need. human. And so I'm going to make gonna, me you're making me the exception to the rule, which isn't fair to everyone else who is like me. Yeah. Literally people right next to me. Right next to me. People yeah. I consider family and, and right. or friends. Right. Uh, so right. I can't right. tolerate that. And then and then if I push back at that, I'm being treated like an now outcast. You are absolutely an outcast. The, the idea that within that party, you could be cast out. I mean, that, and once again, liberals and uh, progressives often make some of the same mistakes. So I tend to kind of be this objective. Yeah. Not completely objective uh, in, in so much as I can be a uh, while biased. Well, you try to, to, to look at all of the sides and then yeah. you try to figure out what your lane is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, speaking of what the actual topic for today <laughs> kind of was supposed Nobody to be. Nobody knows that until you say it. Well, yeah. What we actually got known to talk about was Samuel, Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels. The image consultant who yeah. came up on our radar this week. So Kevin Samuels had a video. Uh, and the video was addressing a young woman who had called into his show. Right. And she was a 35-year-old mother of a 13-year-old boy. Right. Who was looking for advice. And we'll we'll link to the video of we will. the event. We will. The video that spawned our conversation. Right. Uh, but Kevin Samuels essentially uh, doesn't seem like a guy who takes many shorts. He just rips into this girl. He absolutely. Because she's asking for advice on how to get herself a high-value man. Yeah, he absolutely lays it all the way down. And, and he like he asks her to define uh, what type of, you know, what, where she was on a scale of one to ten. Right. He asks her to talk about what she could bring to her relationship. Uh, you know, what made her think she deserved a high yeah. value man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he was not at all compassionate. He was absolutely brutally approach. honest. He was brutally honest. She didn't have a very good. We always talk about that five minute elevator pitch that you have for whatever and she did not have a very good one for herself yeah and he sort of ripped all of that apart yeah he dove straight in he absolutely did uh apparently he has a a radio show and he had a specific topic that he was speaking on and she called in he he was doing uh you know what was it supposed to be it was supposed to be like air it out like basically confront him with how you disagree with him oh okay Okay. so he was he was coming ready to fight anyway right 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 right, and so of the shows where you might want to start asking him a question with some compassion Mm -hmm. you might not want to come on the (laughs) tell it like it is day don't do that don't do that read the room read the room so, and if and if he says I will speak to you offline please schedule a consulting appointment right and he said that to her several times he did he did to which she did not listen but instead got took her opportunity to meet with him she you know so here's what happened he's got this show he's talking about tell it tell it like it is and she calls in for an actual advice. personal advice or consultation uh-huh. and he said this is not the day for that but I'm going to honor this because I'm going to use this to as teach a other teaching people tool to not be calling to not them. do this right <laughs> right 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 and he gives yeah. all the advice he and does. what's interesting is I do think he you know he doesn't fully articulate but I think he's talking about cultural values in his in his approach right she was mishearing that she wasn't fully listening to what he was saying she, she was, was trying to push listening. a particular agenda she was which was please tell me how to get a specific type of man right and, and he basically is saying the type of man you think you want you don't qualify for doesn't want you doesn't want you you don't qualify for your it. preference has a preference your preference has a preference and, and you're you not even t- in the same lane and you shouldn't be talking down to the type of men that might want you right when right. You don't meet the criteria of the men you think you want. Right, right. So just a little backstory. Um, she's been uh, a pet groomer in Carolina. She had a successful pet grooming business. She's been making six figures. Uh-huh. And her issue was that when she, and this is her words, dated down 
you know, she's not meeting the right kind of guys that have the right kind of motivation. Mm-hmm. And so also she contradicted herself several times. But one of the she things did. she said was she doesn't want guys to help her build her business. She essentially right. wants somebody who's already arrived. Right. But then she said one of the things that she brings to a relationship is. You see that now? I'll help you with your business. The thing she said she doesn't want from other people. Is what she says she brings to the relationship. Yeah, yeah. And so I think what's most interesting was, okay, she's looking for this guy to make uh, six figures, six She wants a guy who's already making six figures. Already making, yeah, yeah, yeah. That she can help grow with. Right, right, right. But when he asked her two things. One, what would they be looking for? Mm -hmm. And what does she bring to it? She did not have good answers. She did not have good answers. She didn't have an answer for the first question, which was, what are they even looking for? Do you even know people who make six figures uh, who are not related to you? Yeah. She did not. So right. that makes so she a doesn't big, move in those circles. She doesn't move in those circles, which is step one. Yeah, you got right? in order to you got to you got to pull from the pool that you're a part of. Yeah. Yes. And you can't um, just assume that you can. That you know you can, you can want all you want. <laughs> That doesn't you may make desire. It, that doesn't to, mean to it'll aspire. come to fruition. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so the second was, you know, what does she bring to the the, the, you know, to the to situation, a relationship. to a relationship? Yeah. And her answers to that, like I said, the so five far, minute, it's just not. And did not reflect an understanding of what a man like that might want. Right, right. Which is often the case when people talk about relationship dynamics. Like a lot of times we assume that. So, so much of the, oh, okay, how do I say this in a clear, non-condescending way? Because people are going to push back Be when careful. I say this. I know, yes. I know, I know. Uh, I, once again, I'm going to just go, I sometimes forget how to human. and Yes, you um, are I'm a hair speak, autistic. I'm a hair autistic. So I'm going You're to more speak, than a hair autistic, but. I'm going to speak plainly about this. Okay. Um, we often give out a lot of messaging in this country about exceptionalism so that everyone is special and you can be who you want and be with who you want. And just because you are you, someone is supposed to love you and yeah. accept you and want you. Yes. And unfortunately, we know that to not, not we be most true. know that through our experiences that that is not actually the case. Not true. And that in order for a relationship to work, there must be uh, certain compatibilities across the board. Certain attractions. Uh, yes, there must be attraction. There must be compatibility. Uh, there are a number Sternberg's of triangle for love uh, and affection and relationships uh, identifies three core uh, look at you things with the facts You're right 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 compatibility okay lust ow and what's the other one shoot I'm always blank on the other one I thought you had it on the screen you were like reading like no 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 <laughs> the, I, I do this conversation memorized. so often and now I'm like in a different <laughs> modality and I can't remember what the other one is so compatibility right so there's that initial sort of you know when you meet somebody you have this conversation with them and you guys sort of connect right that's that connection that you have um and then what was the second one i got it all wrong okay. sternberg's triangle involves intimacy uh passion and commitment intimacy uh-huh passion and commitment yes how do you have intimacy with somebody you just met you develop intimacy over the time. Okay. That's All right. And, and intimacy without anything else is just liking. So okay. you can have this. And that is, intimacy is in some ways just a connection. Okay. So Sounds the, like lust. Yes. Kind of, no, no, no. Yeah. It's not really lust. Okay. Passion is lust. Okay. So passion. passion is. So intimacy is the connection. Okay. Right. Just the connection. Right. Right. Passion right. is the attraction. Okay. And okay. then commitment is the just you and no one else. Just you and no one else. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that with each, you want all three of those elements to have consummate love. That means yeah. we are both committed to each other. We both share an intimacy that deepens. Right, 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 and right. And we both have a liking for each other uh, that facilitates right, this right. connection. Now, you can have romantic love, which is just passion and intimacy, right. but not commitment. Right. Right. That Those are the people who burn hot. Like okay. they, they meet each other. I'm really into you right now. And I want right. to rub my parts against your parts. And <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. But it's not going to hold out because we might not even be into each other long term. Right? right. Infatuation is just passion with nothing else. Okay. That's a, that's often just a, you know. Uh, a physical yeah. sort of. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My uh, attraction to Ashley Blaine Featherson. I don't know her as a person. Right. But I think she's a beautiful person who's. Listen, Too young for me. Idris Elba, give me an hour. Right, right, yes. right, right, right. But I, I just know it's a, there's nothing else in it. 
Yeah. We don't yeah. have any intimacy because we have Please no actual talk. connection. Please don't talk. And <laughs> yeah. we don't have any commitment to each other. No. Right. Uh, fatuous love is passion plus commitment. Okay. Right. And so that's just an empty thing, but we don't really have any intimacy. So we're on paper. Okay. We're a relationship. Okay. Uh, empty love is just commitment with none of the other two things. So we're just in this, you know, for the kids. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Or we got this we've contract been, and mm-hmm. we've been and we doing signed it, it for and so we're just going to do it because we do it. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, a business, a business relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, companionate love is intimacy plus commitment. A lot of relationships, particularly marriages, uh, over time they say, and the traditional idea of marriage prior to the, like the nineteen forty or fifties was more companionate love. You started off hot. Okay. But over time, you just stay together and you don't do a lot of the passion things. Okay. You know what I mean? You're, but but you're linked in a thing that you, you know, goes on. You're Some of those relationships to? will go on forever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, normally, that's the type of relationships people think of as their grandparents' relationships. Mm-hmm. There's an affection there, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. often not a passion, not a strong, like... Burning fire. Burning fire. Right, okay. right, right. Uh, and so, commit, consummate love is the one with intimacy, passion, and commitment, right? Well, you have all three. Right, right, right. And so when we think about like just this is love, this is not even relationships. Like, mm-hmm. what does it take to meet certain people's understanding that there are certain cultural barriers? Right. Right. Some of those barriers are financial. Right. And one of the and the main imbalances in the African American community is that the earning rates for African American females have are on a trajectory to far outweigh the average African American male. African American right. males have the opportunity to make more when they just because of misogyny and pa- uh, patriarchy. Uh, but black women are now the most educated group. We're going to school. And so they are we're skyrocketing. Getting these, yeah, we're earnings. getting these. Uh, Even if they only make 75 cents on the dollar. Right. They're still on a, right. a white man. Right. Black men just aren't as educated, aren't advancing as well as as, the, as, as women are. Women. And so women are finding themselves at a, at a crossroads and have for at least the last 20 to right. 30 years where, as, as all this growth was taking place. How do they find men right. that fit their right. criteria because men men also mature a lot slower so yeah. a lot of the times in the 20s when they're looking for relationships men just aren't there yet for they're the types of relationships they the want long term stuff is yeah one of the things we talked about before we had this conversation was a lot of the times these men um, are the cultural um uh, Hallmarks that are used to understand courtship and dating and relationships aren't necessarily culturally the same right. for African American and white people, right? Correct. Correct. Um, I, I joked. I joked about with you, like when we got married. My dad said to me, "Well, you know, technically, she, her family's supposed to pay for the wedding, right. but not many black women or black people have, have the financial capital that can do that. that, yeah. can do that. So, yeah, uh, judging by that standard, which is something he heard." growing up or the way well, yeah. it was yeah. isn't reality well, and for in, a lot in of people cultures, for the average person my family would pay a dowry to you yeah I mean it's it's yeah and I didn't get my dowry you didn't <laughs> And so stuck with me now. Though. I know, right? <laughs> and so th- this idea that we often believe uh, these ideas, we often have these really nebulous ideas about what we think relationships should be, what we think right. our partner should be, right. and they're based on purely ideals. They're purely abstract. Right. But we think we deserve that. We right. think that um, someone who just because I want that type of person, they should. That want means me. I should be able to. Yeah, I yeah. should get that type of person. Yeah. My prince charming is out there. Someday yeah. my prince will come. Yes. And, and on the other side, the men have all these really screwed up ideas. Like they, they often want these sort Their of. Their women are they supposed want, to be a certain way. They're on a They pedestal. often want more passion yeah. than okay. intimacy, right? They okay. want a woman who's totally into them, who will do whatever they want when they want them to do right. it. Also cook, clean. Right, right, All right, these right. sort of old school ideals. But they won't marry them. They don't want to. They don't want to bend their ego too much for this relationship. Right. Uh, they often. A lot of people haven't been taught like what even is emotional intelligence. Right. How do you fight fair? All yeah. these things that go into the sort of relationship mix up that is making a relationship, making the chemistry of a relationship yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, and. A lot of times women, uh, particularly African-American women, as I said, as they get more educated, as they get exposed to other environments and and worlds, um, you know, through that educational process and through that success, now they're looking at, you know, black men and they're just not feeling like they measure up. Yeah. I remember being asked like flat out by uh, a black woman doctor who was like, my daughter is looking, my daughter is training to become a doctor. How does she find a guy like you? Uh, And I'm like... And what's funny about that conversation was I was in a room full of other black women, PhDs <laughs> and PhD candidates at the time. And I'm like, hey, notice I'm the only guy in the room. Right. And they're all listening. <laughs> <laughs> they're all listening. But like, what notice for answer? a second, 
I'm the only guy here. You're the only There's guy. not many people like me. Yeah. Like I struggle so your at numbers times are so to make low. friends with guys like me right. because right. I don't know. There are so few. Like in my time, I've met maybe 12 right. African-American male right. PhD well, and psychologists. I, I think that's interesting about your whole graduate experience because there were so many um, of your cohorts that if you didn't, if they didn't find their their spouse or the person that they're dating in undergrad, yeah. then they were single and they were looking and they were trying yeah. to figure out how do I, as a person who's getting her PhD, find a guy who is like minded? Well, right? it's, that's one of the interesting contradictions of the conversation that we often have with women in mm-hmm. seeking education. It's like, don't focus on relationships right now. Focus on school. But what right. happens is they turn up 20. They're at the end of they're graduating from undergrad and they're like, what now? Right. When do I do, is now the time I'm supposed to be do looking I do for these relationships? When, how does and by work? then they're already kind of skewed in a certain direction. Yeah, very often. Yeah, um, yeah. And, there, and that, that's not to say that uh, it's impossible, but like now their standards are different. As I said before, they've been exposed culturally to just yeah. this whole, whole other level of life, and so some dude who's just like working as a mechanic just yeah. might not fit what their idea is in their head of what type of relationship they want. But it's more likely that you're going to be able to find like 18 different guys who work as right. a mechanic. Right. Like get you a dude who works in HVAC. He's going to make a decent amount of money. The problem always is the ideas. The in ideal your head. in your head. Yeah. Yeah. That's what kills everybody. That like, is what board. kills. Everybody across the board. Yeah. I mean, if you think about the, the 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 PhD girls that are looking for that guy who's a doctor, who's suave, he's a lawyer, he not, whatever. Not whatever. even just PhDs, lawyer women, women, whatever. Who, are, yeah, women yeah, yeah. who work in tech, like yeah, all yeah. these, yeah. once again, these women who are, you know, they're making 60, 70,000 a year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they've, they're well-educated, yeah. successful. And unfortunately, they look around. If you think about looking around, you're surrounded by other white people. Right. And right. so you've learned to navigate that world. You're in this kind of in-between type it's, of world. And unfortunately, there aren't many guys. That goes both both ways yeah that goes both ways there are a lot of you know black men they get a lot. you know there are a, no, a group of black there men. are a group of black men yeah that get to a certain level there's definitely less black men in these yeah. you know yeah higher percent these and and, and, and just to re- rewind back to my cohort um in my cohort there were 10 of us four yeah. of us were bo- were guys all of us had private previous relationships yes so all the guys in their process because i mean if nothing else if yeah. you think about it, our pool was bigger Yes. We could find our way to stable relationships. Like all those guys. Yeah. And I'm actually counting Joaquin, even though Michelle came and she was dating Joaquin. Also, they eventually got yeah. married and had a kid. Yeah. But um, I keep forgetting he's not in my direct cohort. But all of us right. were right in, engaged in a relationship that went on to become a marriage. Yep. God bless them. And they have a beautiful little girl. So we, so. Were, we were we were like most of the guys who are on that upperly mobile track tend mm-hmm. to be quick, quickly attached. Because and also have a wider pool. Before him. Yeah. We have a wider pool to choose from. And so long as there's a certain capacity. You have a wider pool yes. or are you willing to look at We have we we can we we I think I think it's having a wider pool. Because okay. there's so many more women with education. True. When you're in true. that field, you're just bouncing like the, true. the floor is yours. Well, that's true. So if you think about the fact that African American women, there are so many more getting their upper level degrees mm-hmm. and whatnot. You have the pick of the litter, basically. Yes. The higher up you get. Which yeah. is what this guy was saying, which is what Kevin Samuels was saying. Yeah. Those guys, they are higher up. Yeah. They can choose whatever they, they choose want. Whoever they want. You have to know what they want. You have to know what they want. You have to be in and the spaces to, where they are. You have to be in so the spaces where they are. So much of compatibility is yeah. a matter of proximity. Proximity. Yep. Yep. So much of that commitment comes from just being in the room yep. where it happens. Yep. Yep. If you're not in those rooms, you can aspire to be in those rooms. And I'm not saying don't keep trying, don't stop trying. But, but also, if you're you, not in those rooms, you don't know what also, it's even like to be in that room. Like for this particular woman, she was 35, like 35 years had passed her by. And she was in all these rooms looking ahead to the next room. Right. And had spent all this time outside of relationships. And I mean, once again, don't want to be that guy who says this. The longer yeah. you go without relationships, relationships. The harder it is for you to get into one and yes. understand how relationships it, warp you. Yeah. And being outside of relationships warp you. They do. They do. I could I could say that there are many examples like you're kind of your your teens, late teens, you know, like 15 
to 25 mm-hmm. are really the time where you're supposed to kind of be bouncing off of people, figuring out who you are and how figure you Figure out fit. what you like and what you don't like. And if you and... don't fit with a lot of people, you got to find your special committee of people where you, you do find fit. find your tribe. Find yes. your tribe. Because if you don't, you're just going to get weirder and weirder as you get old because <laughs> I'm a lot less open to, yeah. you know what I mean, a lot of things. But I've also been in a relationship with you for so long yeah. that I don't have to change too much. Like you no. kind of get when I'm going to get super weird or when I need my space I or get you and all you these get things. Me. And yeah. so that works. There's a ton of compatibility here by virtue right. of just us growing up together. Well, and that was the thing. Like we, when we met, we were, I was 19 and you were 20. We are so different than those people. We are completely different uh, yeah, we got some core. We've got some stuff, core but like, things. There's a lot of behavioral and things that changed. Yes, because we're 43 and 42 now, yeah. right? And so along that time, there have been changes, and yeah, you know, God bless us, we've been to able to, to yeah adjust those to changes. To adjust, yeah. Yes, because it's a continuous. Adjustment. Cycle of adjustment. Yes. yes. Families are systems. Every change to a family affects the system. Yep. Every uh, anytime person you, you add, or add, a person, add or subtract to the system, anytime yep. you make a major change, yep. like moves or new babies or new any jobs, of those things, any of that, even the, the good and the bad, yep. changes the system. Yep. And, you know, for a person who's, you know, 35 trying to, or trying to find a relationship, 35, hard like a 13 there. year old, there's some hard truths that, that are, you know, the there pull that some you can adjustments. Pull from. Yeah. That you're going to have to make to your expectations. Yes. Regardless of your income. Regardless of income. And And so you might be aiming for guys who just you can't, you don't have access to. Well, how do you find among the guys you do have access to? Right. What are you willing to concede? Because a lot of what people don't know about, I mean, because we should speak for speak to the fact that we do have a lot of privilege having been in our relationship for as long as we have. We do. There's we a do. lot about dating that I don't understand. <laughs> we don't get um, it. Because I just don't we have haven't access had to, to that. Date. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in uh, a very long time. Yeah. And even as a person who gives advice to 20 year olds about dating, I often have to stop. I even had that conversation with you earlier. Like, look, I was giving this 20 something advice as a 43 year old Did I give him man. a 43 year old advice or did I give him 20 year old? Yeah. <laughs> did I do that taking into account that I see further down the road yeah. so I'm like you'll be fine that guy's immature you don't want to date don't. him you're dodging a bullet <laughs> right yeah. right right yeah. as opposed to no I hear you where you are um, yeah. so recognizing that means also recognizing that you know I know I'm warped in a specific way by being in a relationship with you yeah. Uh, and, you know, I use the word warp. Some people might find that pejorative, but I recognize that it. it's just recognizing that I'm not the same shape that I was yeah. in when I met yeah. you. Um, I could look back at, you know, I was a lot more entitled to things and misogynistic and um, had to sort of reconcile with, do I want this relationship or do I want to be, you know, you the dude be who the... pulls his thing out and says, <laughs> I'm the man, do put what your, I want because I want it. Put sick on the table. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's a family show. Um, <laughs> right. But like pulls out his ego and says, you know, do what I want because I say, mm. and or do I want a relationship with this person that I get along with? We're really compatible. I was say, because that would have gone over well. It would have been a fight. <laughs> um, am yeah. I going to fight fair? Am I going to, am I fighting to win or am I fighting to keep yeah. a relationship going? Yeah. Like recognizing that all those things are fundamental right. and that, you know, maybe I can think, a lot of times that's what causes people to fall apart is thinking yeah. that they you know, they're not getting enough out of a relationship mm-hmm. they're thinking that, you know, maybe that intimacy gets broken along the way and so mm-hmm. we're not as connected as we used to be. Or you're not fighting fair or you're not mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. considering the fact that the other person has grown and changed. I mean, if you're talking about a significant amount of time yeah. that's also a consideration to make, yeah. right? Sometimes when I'm talking to my, my 20-something clients and stuff, they'll tell me something that happens in a relationship and I'll be like, oh no, no, you should have totally took a different angle on that. Yeah. But you don't know because you've don't never know. done this before. This is your yeah. first time having yeah. this problem come up. Yeah. And if you had just put your ego aside and apologized or put your ego aside and said, Whoa, moved on from I care about you. Yeah. You two could have maybe solved this or yeah. let them go if they want to go because yeah. you should not hold them in a thing they don't want to be in. Yeah. And just because you two were together doesn't mean you were meant to be together. Yeah. So it's like, you know, part of what makes us take the leap of relationships is yeah. that we want to take the risk. And so we need to be deluded. The problem is that delusion could last for a very long time. And if we don't reconcile and self-reflect, as we were saying before. You've got to be able to self-reflect. You're going to miss the message that you could have got. I feel like every relationship I was ever in taught me a thing about myself and about the world. And there was a reason that it had to go the way it went, whether I wanted it to at the time or not, whether or not it broke my heart or not. And I think one of the things that was key in this particular woman who was talking to uh, Kevin Samuels was she, she lacked the ability to self-reflect. She, she lacked the ability, the ability to artic- articulate what yeah. she 
what her values were, right. what her identity was. And she just sort of hoped that there was an answer out there. That she didn't said she was listening changing. and you, you. Yeah. And growing. Yeah. I think that I think the biggest thing was that she said she was listening and you could tell that she was not. Yeah. And part of it may have been his delivery. But the other part of it was I think she was looking for this silver bullet. Right. You know, like I so I want to I want to meet a guy who's beautiful, right. who's six feet tall, right. who makes six figures like I do. And right. that's what I want. And he was like, do you qualify for that? And she couldn't answer that. What's question. interesting is if you've watched other videos by him, he does the same thing to guys, too. Like he, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. And so he'll yeah. let a guy know, like, what makes you think you deserve a woman? You right. know, a lot of guys have this very weird. And I, I've had this conversation with, with you young men. You have a lot of. Too. Yeah. They all want the same. T- they all want the same, you know, model-esque. Yeah. Uh, kind of intelligent but not smarter than me because it would hurt my ego right you know right type of woman very and then specific uh, they're confused as to why that woman's not clamoring yeah. for them it's like well she also has the pick of the litter so yeah she doesn't have to even look in your direction right and you right. think just because you're a decent person a nice guy yeah she should like you but who's to say you'd even be compatible because a lot of times the biggest part of it is you may not even be compatible. you may not even be compatible you may not even like them yeah I mean, that's a big deal. A lot right? of times we assume just because people are pretty and attractive and we are attracted or to them. Or that we're attracted to them and that, that, that we, we will like them. But listen. as I was saying before, passion and intimacy are different things. Yeah, they are definitely. That lust and infatuation does not mean it's going to cure you for a yeah. long term commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's a big part of relationships. And so the, a lot of times those ideals that people have, just like this woman who we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. and just like we, we were talking about all that, those ideals don't always carry out into real life. They don't always translate. And if we if we focus only on the ideals, we'll never meet the real relationships right. that might be right, right next to us. Right. Um, right. I, I know we talked about this in a previous episode. I was always a, more of a fan of the girl next door than the girl yeah. who every guy wanted. Yeah. Because I didn't want to have to fight every night to prove my love, right? <laughs> right. Uh, you think... Oh, yeah, yeah. I want this woman that's, you know, you want a woman you are attracted Attracted to. You want a person that you can carry a long term attraction for. Right. But also the idea that, like, if everybody's into her, then in my mind, that always devalued it a little bit. Like, yeah, I know she is a person that I will like to look at. But if everybody's staring, yeah, that means that my look is kind of like it's earned. Yeah. But it's also like more of a it's more of a fight that I want to have to be. It's more of a fight. And then there's also the idea that they present differently than someone who is just being authentic. Yes. Right. Yes. So you married the girl next door. I'm the girl next door. Yeah. The girl next to the girl. Hey, I'm the girl next to the girl. And and that, you know, recognizing that meant um, you, you have a better I have a better shot with that because, you know, I'm not I don't necessarily see myself as the guy who stands out. In a crowd, necessarily, because I'm a quiet, but you stood out to me. Person. You yeah. stood out to me, and, and I think in the end, you want to be with a person who you stand out to, and then they stand out to you. Like, yeah, you know, you were with uh, a girl who went off to be a model, and I was like, I like the girl that smiles and laughs at me, <laughs> yeah. and not the model one that my friend is chasing. Yeah, because um, uh, she seems vapid in a way. Yeah, um, nothing against Princess, but no. you know, yeah. she just yeah. wasn't my type. Right, and I thought right, she was right. funny. You know, uh, she was fine. She but... wasn't funny. I didn't think she was funny, but she's, she's fine. But... She just wasn't my type. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the girl who sat next to her and laughed at my jokes was like, "Okay, we could get along." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and for me, that was like much more important. Yeah. Uh, and so it's kind of like I, I always knew like humor was kind of an in uh, when it came to relationships. Yeah, uh, because you know that's how you can build some of that commitment and intimacy. The, the idea that we can laugh through uh, anything and, and that takes you so much further. A lot of the other stuff that just that just attraction does than just money. Yeah, you want someone you could be compatible with, and sometimes it means having to give up some of those ideals because if you're like everything gets along with us, but you don't make six figures. But right, it's like it's like here's the thing: is that the hill you want to die on? There are poor people who are totally happy and fine and in love, happy, and they struggle. They're living their best life. Might be a little bit easier, you know. Uh, one of the comments that I was reading was like, well, you know, relationships break up because of sex and finances. And that's true. But usually at the center of that is some of the other stuff. Yeah. It's what this person's expectations around these yeah. things. It yeah. isn't that. Unspoken expectations. Right, right. right? Or spoken, spoken. Or spoken, we, we, yeah. You nag me about them constantly. I hear I you, but I don't them. care. Yeah. Uh, or I, I'm unable to change. Or them. you've got yeah. ideals like you're you're on me every day because I don't make you know sixty thousand yeah. dollars a year. Yeah, and you're just making our lives miserable because you believe that I should make more. Right. Or right. you know what I mean? It's just life is hard and it's causing us a lot of stress. Yeah, and I feel like that that's what this girl is like. Like she's talking about. Yeah, you know, I always try to help these guys with their businesses, and it's like, what? Yeah, is that what you're looking? Because that's what you said you no, didn't want but, to do. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and that's sort of, once again, there's often a, a host of contradictions at the center of those yeah. types of people who, you know, they've gone through life that long and not been able to get what they want. But the, yeah. often, what do you actually want? Who are you as a person? What do you really know about yourself? Right. Um, and what do you have to provide to others? What do you bring to the table in right. life, let alone? Uh, and, and here's the thing about capitalism that messes people up. Mm-hmm. Uh, financial and monetary and you know career success is not a personality it will tell you that right. it is and it will make you, it will say keep chasing that thing right but the reality is does it that doesn't really bring very much to an actual relationship, relationship with another human being yeah. it is a type there's a there is a culture within it but it's not enough to carry those other things right and, and so you know there's a lot of people chasing the quan, the quan and they'll never quite get what they want what out of life, for, right? Yeah. Or what they could get. They'll have a level of comfort. Yeah. There's a level of ease. Yeah. But they won't necessarily have happiness because you don't find happiness in that stuff. Yeah, there's this joy that, you know, you're you're going to miss when you're not yeah. fully compatible, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so if you just want a relationship, you know, you can, I mean, that, you can that, buy I mean, into those. Anybody can, anybody can get one of those. That's, yeah, yeah. that's not hard. But I mean, isn't that like, you know, like eight different Tyler Perry movies? Like you get this Absolutely. man who's super rich. Absolutely. He's also super rude. So you got everything you wanted, but you really just but needed you really just a needed blue collar man with some cornrows. Works corn in rows. the steel mill. <laughs> <laughs> right, with some cornrows <laughs> and who knows how to work on cars. Yep. Like if you could just lower your standards. Tyler Perry has been telling you women for the decades. Whole time. He had the keys. Major key. The whole time. Listen to Mr. Perry. <laughs> Didn't know that's where this blog was going to end up. <laughs> Watch the Tyler Perry movies. Watch okay? the Tyler Perry movies. Learn, <laughs> learn a little something. Those high value men ain't not the, worth it. The guy next to the guy. Is the, the guy, guy next to the guy might be the guy for you. He's the guy for you. Or just learn to amending your expectations that just because this person has. I mean, a lot of times we, we used to talk about, you know, having women who have these lists of all these things. Oh, yeah. And the older yeah, you yeah. get, the more you either get staunchly like, no, this has to meet all these criteria mm-hmm. because all the mistakes that ever happened in the past was because they weren't this or that. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you amend the list and you shorten it. Yeah. Uh, and very often you carry the baggage of the mistakes you've made that you caused do. you to amend that list because you got hurt and you don't know how to reconcile you that hurt. You don't want to do that again. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, but you need to reconcile that hurt and reconcile it with yourself so that you don't keep perpetuating it right. in other relationships. Right, and I think that was one of the things that he said. He Listen, he said a lot of things that were uh, politically incorrect he, yeah. and he was he rude did not sugarcoat at some point. Anything, He did not. But he wasn't untrue. But he was not untrue and one of the things what he said was that you need to, to have some personal therapy and yeah. and 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 think about yourself first. Yes. Right. And figure out who you are and what you want and what you need. Right. Right. And I and think why that, you might think you need that other thing. Because a lot right. of times it's like financial stability. It may stability not even is, be what you need. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, I think there are a lot of things that she's looking for that she thinks she needs. I think capitalism teaches people to think they need like money and yeah. that money is power. Yeah. And that with that, there will be happiness. But and I mean, if you look at most rich people, true. they're very unhappy. I've met so many unhappy rich people yeah. who hit rock bottom because there's nothing in it. But or they've had multiple relationships and they just can't find yeah, anything yeah. that sort of. One interesting caveat, and, and I, I don't want to go too deep into this, is the the super the well off uh, upper demographic white people. Uh, their kids, you know, you ask them if there's any dysfunction in their world, and they're like, no. And it's like, oh, that must be nice. Like your parents made just enough money to not have either you your need they've, dysfunction they've, at all? they've hidden it from you. Uh, yeah. Or they're so comfortable that yeah. so much of the dysfunction that comes from being on a razor's edge all the time, it. like being stressed or yeah. whatnot, like yeah. Yeah, it doesn't mean they don't have like a hair of anxiety in their family yeah. or, you know, a depressed uncle far, three times removed. Yeah. But like they just they're just rich enough to be otherwise hidden from the stressors of the world. And it's actually the super fascinating. The natural stressors of the world. The natural stressors that come from just not having enough. And yeah. that doesn't mean that they're, you know, their dad might have a drinking problem or something, but they don't even know it's a problem. Like, yeah. because yeah. culturally it's not looked at as yeah. dysfunctional. Well, because so, if or he's they still have, going to work and he's still bringing mm-hmm, the money home. They'll often have matter. a lot of dysfunction that's just sort of not noticed because it's part and parcel with how everybody is. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm also, I'm often very fascinated. That's one of the reasons that I, I'm not quite ready to give up that job is because it's like, oh, I get a glimpse into that world where yeah. things are just comfortable enough that some of those stressors that the rest of us have down here and below, yeah. you don't even, you're not even aware of. You don't even notice. 
Right. Which is why when we get into like, yeah. when you talk about things like defunding the police uh, and things like that, where, you know, because we came from where we did, we have a lot of awareness of why those uh, slogans are necessary. Yeah. People who don't have any sort of like the policeman, it's just no another idea. person they know who it's, works for them. And that's not true for us. <laughs> that's not true that's for not us. not true for And us. so, you know, that once again, they're from this different culture where yeah. the, the things we espouse and yeah. understand, they don't understand because yeah. for them. There, what is what is there to be stressed about? What Why would you even, need this? Right, and and the thing Why about you know those municipal programs, yeah. and 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 you think and you think about the fact that how it affects our daily life, mm-hmm. it affects you, yeah. and it of course, of course, it informs your relationships with people, yes, with society, with yes, and know, I think I think if date. more people could just recognize that. We're, this is an ecosystem. We all share this planet, as I said earlier. Right. And that recognizing that just because you don't see it for yourself doesn't mean doesn't that mean other people out happening. there don't need it. Right. And that sometimes we have to make sacrifices for the other people. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we got to pay into things that we might not directly benefit from. But if other people benefit from it, it makes, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats. Right. Sometimes we got to go out and wear our masks. Right. Because you don't want to get a bunch of people sick. Right. We're sharing the ecosystem. We so are sharing the world with other people. And that unfortunately. Unfortunately, there are case systems in America that separate us, uh, yeah. and some of that is finances, some of that's cultural, some of that's just by virtue of systems that were built long before you were born. Right. And but they I think still exist. I think having awareness of them and finding your place in them doesn't mean you're limiting yourself, uh, but it does mean understanding that you're operating within certain parameters. You are equipping yourself with the knowledge to make an informed decision. Right, right, right. And you can have ideals and you can strive towards ideals, but some of it's also recognizing the reality that you are presently in. Right. And that's not to say that your your reach shouldn't exceed your grasp, but you right. might want to recognize that if you keep doing that, you fly too close to the sun, Icarus. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was the thing about the girl. It's like, you right. know, she wanted to get this ideal rich, man. This ideal but guy. But she didn't quite meet what that ideal guy might be into. And what? you can believe within yourself that you have a lot to offer him. Right. And that's that not doesn't to say mean he's going he's gonna to look in your way. That doesn't mean you're not I've been shooting to for Kelly Rowland for a very long time. She's not going to date you. I know. And I'd be great for her. <laughs> you would not. I would be great for Kelly Rowland. Listen, she doesn't have a butt like mine. <sighs> Tell me I'm wrong. Why do you have to do that? <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Why do you have to do that? I'm just saying. I love you and good night. Right. <laughs> She's not going to get any of your jokes. She would. She'd love my jokes. No. She would love my... She wouldn't because... She wouldn't get them. She'd be like, he's so into Marvel stuff. I mean... <laughs> she's literally spent her entire life being a celebrity, so she has literally no... She's like, I mean, I thought they were fun to watch, but like, you want to put them up on the walls? <laughs> As I that's, stare that's, at DC Comics uh-huh. and Black Panther and Iron Man uh-huh, and, uh-huh. and Yoda. And Superman's behind you and my own created characters are behind is you. Is that Yoda or is that Grogu? Oh, Yoda. Yoda, what? look at you. Look at you learning what? things. Oh, wow. What? Wow, wow, wow. She can't do that. Uh, <laughs> so having to come to terms with in my <laughs> 40s that although I can be infatuated with some of those people, I can't. I know that they're not checking for me, and I'm totally well, fine in the lane I'm in. I love you. I know. I appreciate that. I love you, too. I think you're handsome. Thank you. You're you're not bad to look at yourself. I'm not bad to look at. No, no. I wouldn't kick you out of bed. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's the thing. Like, I, I wouldn't want anybody that I'm crushing on to talk. Mm, see? Because you know that you don't have any of the commitment or intimacy. Not unless I give them wanna, a script. You just, you just want to run through the infatuation. Hey, hey. Enjoy that. Oh, just be beautiful. Say all the right things. Say all the right stuff. Don't say anything wrong. I don't want you to, listen, I don't want you to rap. Right, right, right. I don't want it's you like, to say stuff. It's like stuff. me with certain like Instagram models. It's like whenever they make a weird face, I'm like, oh, she made an ugly face. <laughs> No. Don't do that. Don't do, no, ever do that you. again. Don't do that. Don't do, don't do that. <laughs> There's a list of stuff that you're approved to don't, do. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know what? I really just prefer the pictures where you lay yourself out in a certain way. Right. Because that's, right. that's okay. Thank you, Ayesha Diaz. Do not, you don't need to speak. You have some pretty crap Twerk opinions. Work and stop. Don't, 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 yes. don't, don't tell me your crap opinions. I don't want that. Yeah. That's how I know I'm getting older because it's like, man. <laughs> I don't want to deal with you as a person. Do you pop bottles every night? You're doing table dances uh, every night? Uh, yeah. Man, that sounds like way too much. It looks like fun when those 20-somethings are out there dancing on the floor. Right, right. Like, yeah, you don't want to just hang out the house, watch mm-hmm. some movies with me. Mm-hmm. Let's watch some Netflix. Mm-hmm. Saved by the bell ringing. I will out. sit through Mandalorian with you. Mm. Mm. 
Not really. I mean, I will under certain circumstances. Under certain circumstances. All right. Um, we've gone way over again because like we have we no sense of control. <laughs> I have a timer that's telling me we're eleven minutes past the hour on this episode. And it's just flashing. Yep, yep, flashing <laughs> red. So no matter how much I put into this, I am not going to remember to get these episodes under an hour. Yeah, we appreciate you listening. We do. Far. Thanks for riding with us uh, on another Hall Space podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, haven't figured out what we're going to call this, but I think she called it the lane for you. I think yeah. that was one of the, of the, but that might not be what it's called by the time I edit it and come yeah. up with the title. There but are two halls. R- there are two halls. Two more episodes this year okay. uh, and two more episodes in season uh, season one. one. And then we'll take a break and move on to Meet season you in two. in January for season two in 2021. Yay. Looking forward to it. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you. So you know what the music means. You know what the music means. Our time is up. I say good day, sir. I say good day. The Hall Space Podcast is brought to you by Hall Productions, LLC. Show notes and credits can be found at our webpage, thehallspacepodcast.wordpress.com. Any questions, comments, or concerns can be sent to us at thehallspacepodcast at gmail.com. The show is written by Dagger Penn Davis. Music is curated by DJ Cabal. The show is produced by Chuck Jones and recorded at Slash and Trash Studios. If you like what you hear and you want to hear more, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you all have a good week. Hall. We rise brilliantly.